Come on, wizards. You're going to tell me this is a showcase? I say no case. Bros, listen, I'm going to rant for a few minutes, okay? So if that's what you want out of life, then maybe like the dang video because I'm all fired up today. All right, let's take a little retrospective on showcase frames. So this is definitely not the first time they printed the showcase alternate frame, but the first time I remember seeing them in a set with commons and uncommons and it really grabbed my attention was Throne of Eldrain. Magic had experimented with different frames prior to this, but this is the first time I was really enamored by them. Take a look at this fairy guide, Mother. It looks like a storybook, right? It's eye-catching, it's pretty, it's evocative of the fable Mother Goose aesthetic that Throne of Eldrain was trying to create. All right, then came Theros Beyond Death. Look at Daxos over there. He's just a hunk. He's got glowy eyes. He's chilling in the stars, brother. Also, pretty nice looking alternate frame, grounded in the Greek myth constellation theme that this set had. Also puts you in mind of the little enchantment and enchantment creatures on Theros that have that Ziggy Stardust effect. This set is always going to have a special place in my heart, but we had Ikoria. This kind of pushed the envelope a little bit. And that cartoony pulp comic full art look is really awesome and thematically tied to the plane of weird cat nightmare beasts and mutations. I still think this had some of the coolest creatures in recent memory. It's a very influential set for me. Plus you had the little nod to the furry community, with Christina Ricci joining the ranks of the Bonders. Well, time goes on and the showcased art also goes on. Look at this guy. He looks like my Uncle Giuseppe over there. It's kind of an Italian stereotype. He's named Volo too. It's a little offensive if you ask me. Some of these have been winners, some have been losers. But it's all a bit subjective, so be warned. You may disagree with some of the hot takes in this video. You know what? That's okay. Just continue to live your life as if nothing ever happened. And while we're on the subject of Volo here, let's talk about some of the parchment style cards from AFR. Some are really cool. Put you right back into your youth when you're pouring through monster manuals, just looking at beholders. The Tarrasque here looks really mean and ravenous. But some are really horrendous. Let's fast forward to Commander Legends 2. Take a look at Ellen Harbury's busybody, right? The regular art. I mean, come on, dude. She's a 10. Admit it. You want to go to the bakery and buy some muffins just to get a sneak peek at that old busybody. It what? Hold on, dude. My God. Is this the Instagram versus reality thing? What was the other one? A filter? I mean, because put that filter back on, dude. I don't want to be looking at this lady all day. I'd be embarrassed to attack my opponent with this thing. Now, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, right? Had this really nice neon shrine look that looked kind of cool, I guess. I'm not the biggest fan of this thing, but it depicts the characters kind of nicely. They're innocuous for the most part, but a bit busy. Sometimes you can't tell what the heck is going on in the art. All right, now wait a sec. I want to point out a really nice parchment here. What about Carlatch? The showcase seems a little bit better. I wouldn't be ashamed to run that in my decks. The other one looks like a dang cartoon character. But Carlatch is out there. She's working those deltoids, buddy. She's hitting the gym. She's taking it into combat and into my heart forever. Then we fast forward to Nuka Bena. New York gangster set. Had that New York gangster art with lots of golden art deco frames where the architecture looks like an Ayn Rand novel or something. I don't know, dude. I don't even know who Ayn Rand is. It's just something I heard one time. I didn't go to art school, all right? It looks decadent. looks gangsterly in its own way. These are fine, I guess. Take a look at the old Titan of Industry here. It's a building. It's got some buildings hanging off of it. It's great. If someone attacked with this, I'd be like, is that a creature? Are you sure? It looks a little cozy in there. Oh man, Dominary United had some stained glass stuff going on. I really liked some of it. It was really nice. Shoulder of the Apocalypse, for example. I mean, this looks like something I want in my deck. I wouldn't be mad if I pulled it. I really think the regular art is infinitely cooler, but whatever. All right, so that brings us right up to All Will Be One. I have to say, the concept Praetors are pretty awesome looking. Kind of like stylized watercolor monsters that are truly menacing. Reminds me of the Max comic book, if you ever check that out in the 90s. We also have some really perplexing showcase art in the set. I'm not sure what this is even supposed to be. The monochrome splash art is a little bit off to me. Some of the cards don't seem to have an identifiable silhouette. Like the obliterator here. Take a look at this guy. Just looks like a messy chocolate milk T-Rex. I mean, what the heck is going on? All right, dudes, that brings us to today. Basically, they're throwing all the showcase frames from recent sets onto alternate art for the dudes and ladies and whatever from whatever plane they're from in March of the Machine. All right, that sounds great, and in practice, it looks really cool. Look at old Catilda and Lyre here. Looks like a Fleetwood Mac album cover. Can you see this guy singing back up on Snow-Covered Hill while Catilda just melts faces with her vocal stylings? Because I can. Anyway, it looks neat. You have these two canonically involved romantic partners, right? Just throwing that out there, just being in love. And it reminds you that they traveled all the way from Innistrad on their world tour. 
You got the grains, you got the harvest fruits, you got the sunflowers there, you got the beautiful, beautiful autumnal cornucopia. Looks great. And the alternate art is pretty sweet as well. Whoa, hold up, record scratch. What the heck is this? It's a dang coin, dude. If I opened this in a pack, I'd seriously consider retooling my whole life. Is this supposed to be a menacing creature? Come on. Well, you take a look at where this guy came from. Look at this dang art just basking the beauty of this thing. He was an impossibly huge dinosaur emerging from the lightning he kind of carries around with him everywhere. Just terrifying the locals, you know what I mean? Going down to the Piggly Wiggly and being like, hey, and taking the last of the sweet potatoes. He's renovating their property against the will of the homeowners association. That's one thing I know for sure. I mean, this is iconic. The people that are sitting across the table from you know that something terrible is about to go down. I mean, even the new art for Itali is really beefy. They did him a little dirty with his little paw paws, but that's all right. The trees and the little birds give a great sense of scale to this thing. He's as big as a mountain, dude. He's bigger than your mother-in-law's obsession with 90 Day Fiance. And the Phyrexian eyes side is kind of crazy as well. I mean, he's green now. Forget about it, dude. He can be green if he wants to. What are you going to tell this guy he can't be green? He doesn't have infect, but he has infect, I guess. He's about to chow down on some little fellas. Look at them little dinosaurs just kind of running around all messy. But let me tell you something. This showcase is a blow case, as in you blew it. It's a coin with a dinosaur head. Looks like a dang duck. All right, I'm sorry. I apologize. This is in no way menacing, scary, or even realistic in any sense. How is a coin supposed to attack? What, am I going to throw it downhill at one of my buddies? How is it supposed to deal damage to a player and give it poison counters? What is it, a poison coin with jagged edges? Come on, dude. It's just so disappointing looking. It makes me sad. It makes me revolted. It makes me gaseous. It makes me nauseous, dude. Who's minting coins during a Phyrexian invasion anyway? Honestly, it sounds like something Mike Lindell, CEO of MyPillow, would do. Look at this monster. There's an existential threat to all life, right? Time to make some souvenirs, make a buck or two, make a dang coin that looks like a duck, buddy. All right, now let, let's just pause. Let's take a step back, okay? Don't misconstrue this to mean that I don't appreciate pictures of coins, all right? Pictures of coins, I love pictures of coins. I have a framed picture of every coin I could get hanging on the wall of coins in my house. But it's meant to represent a horrifically big, one-hit kill dinosaur, one of the biggest threats in MTG, based on one of the most impactful creatures around. This thing's in every red precon out there. He's a primal storm, but he's not a shiny coin, you know what I'm saying? And I don't want to hear anyone criticizing the artist because the art is beautifully rendered. I'm just confused as to what the art direction was, you know what I mean, coming from Wizards. Hey, look, we have a 50-foot dinosaur we need to depict on a card. We need some alternate art, right? So and the artist is probably like, oh my god, that sounds amazing. I'd love to do, do like a big painting. It's like, hmm, why don't you do a coin, okay? I'm sorry, Wizards, but if I wanted to look at coins, I'd go to the bank, I'd get some Susan B. Anthony's and get back in my tent. This coin showcase is going to be an F-minus for me, buddy. Sneaky G from Better Commander signing off.